Hello and welcome back to The Gallant Goblin. I've got a cool one for you today. This is a paid Kickstarter preview for Kraken Ships, Fantasy Tabletop Miniatures 2. If you've seen several of my reviews now, you probably know that I get really excited about PC miniatures from the more obscure races. We already have so many human and elf minis, but if you want to play as one of the less popular races or ancestries, well, you often just don't have many minis to choose from. That's where Kraken Ships comes in. These minis are at the same 28 millimeter scale as most of the minis we review on the channel, so they'll fit right in on your table. They're made of PVC plastic and arrive unpainted but fully assembled. They're on your standard medium-sized unpainted bases. Now, today I'm going to show you preview renders of what's available on the current Kickstarter, but you know me, I wouldn't make this video if I didn't have real life figures to show you as well so you can see what kind of quality to expect. So we have a collection of minis from the first Kickstarter here to show you as well. Kraken Ship groups their Kickstarter minis into sets of four, so that's the way I'm going to share them with you here. Let's start by looking at the minis from their very first Kickstarter, which are available on sale on their website and as add-ons on their current Kickstarter. I gotta start with my favorite in the set, the so-called Chellen. But you know what these guys are in D&D terminology. Turtle alert. Now, as you may know, these companies that aren't affiliated with Wizards of the Coast and D&D generally can't use proprietary terms, so you'll often see more generic names like Turtle Folk or entirely original names like Chellen. Here we have our Chellen Warrior and our Chellen Monk. The monk in particular has just an amazing pose. We also have some example pictures of what these minis can look like if you get them into the hands of a talented painter. Here we have our Chellen Wizard and Cleric. The wizard comes with optional clear plastic spell effects that you can add to his staff and to his spell book. Now, we're going to see how far they've come with these translucent parts when we get to some of the minis in the new Kickstarter. If you want to use these as turtles in a D&D &D game, you can find the playable stats for a turtle in a digital supplement called the Turtle Package, which is available on D&D Beyond and on DM's Guild. We'll throw a link to those in the doohickey down below. Those of you who know me know that I love cats, and we have a distressingly limited number of cat folk minis available out there. In D&D, they're called Tabaxi with their playable stats and Volo's Guide to Monsters. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, they're just called Cat Folk with their stats in the Advanced Player's Guide. Kraken Ships calls them Gremlkins. Here we have our lion-looking fighter and our tiger-looking monk. And here is our Grimalkin Puma looking sorcerer with two optional spell effects. And here's our Lynx Bard with his loot and feathered hat. The spell effects arrive in a separate little baggie inside the box. You can paint them and glue them on with super glue or your adhesive of choice. Now, Kraken Ships hasn't just come up with their new names for these races or ancestries, but they also have their own lore, which you can find on the Kraken Ships website. We have eight figures in the next set, and this one's really interesting. They call them Foradin, or Forest Guardians. I think you could very easily use them as elves or as furbolgs in D&D, which are detailed in Volo's Guide to Monsters. We're starting here with our male and female bard, both of whom are really nicely detailed minis. I think it would be pretty awesome to have a romantic or sibling pair of furbolg bards in your game. Or what about a pair of Furbolg Monks? These two are some of my favorites in the entire collection. Both have interesting and unique poses and really do look cool together, I think. Now, if you are playing Furbolgs in D&D, they get a bonus to Wisdom and Strength, and besides Dexterity, Wisdom is the most important stat for a Monk. Though, keep in mind that Tasha's Cauldron of Everything made some changes to racial abilities, opening up more options for you. But if you are sticking to the original stats as written, perhaps the Furbolg Druid makes the most sense. Wisdom is of top importance to a Druid, and Furbolgs, according to the lore, have a deep bond with nature, just like Druids do, so it's a natural fit. Our female and male Forest Guardian Druids are really unique and would make excellent PC minis. 
But if you want to live on the wild side, our last two minis have you covered. The male and female forest guardian barbarians, each with axes and furs. They certainly look like survivalists, and I can very clearly picture the story of the furbolg barbarian living off the land and using his or her rage to defend those they care about. And that little furbolg strength boost will really come in handy too for a barbarian. And that covers what was available in their first Kraken Ships Kickstarter. Each of these is available on their website for only about six bucks, but you can add them onto your Kickstarter order now for a discount. Overall, I think they're fantastic minis and a great resource for those of you who are ready to play more interesting races and ancestries in your game. Let's compare the scale of them with our existing minis from WizKids. As you can see, they do fit right in. The various races do have slightly different heights, which should help them stand out on the table. But having them all at that same 28mm scale means that they'll play together well with your existing collection of minis. So let's see what Kraken Ships has cooking for their new Kickstarter. I really want to start with the Tessera, who are elemental people like the Genasi in D&D. The first set of four includes two Air Tessera rogues and two Fire Tessera sorcerers. Now these figures you're seeing on your screen are computer renders, but you should have a good idea of what to expect from the final figure based on those earlier minis I showed you. Like the old sets, these will come with the transparent parts unattached to the figure itself, which should make painting it a lot easier. Once they're fully painted, they do have guides available to help you assemble them, though I don't think it'll really be a difficult process. I absolutely love the rogue riding the lightning here. Just an amazing mini. The fire sorcerers come with big spell effects which venture all the way up their arms, plus flaming translucent hair which I really can't recall seeing in any other minis. Another just a really cool touch. I also like the little vials and the scrolls and the spell component pouches that they have on their belts. Those little details can really add a lot to a mini. Our next set contains two Earth Tessera fighters and two Water Tessera druids. The Earth Tessera effects are a little bit more subtle. They have crystals growing out of their skin, which gives you the opportunity to create some really interesting and colorful paint jobs. Otherwise, they just have an enormous number of weapons with hammers and bows and shields and spears and even picks. Plus, how many minis do we have that have dreadlocks? Another really cool touch. The water druids have some huge spell effects, plus flowing watery hair. The beach theme is really cool on these as well. They have shell necklaces, flowing robes, and staves made out of lobster claws and starfish and pearls. Again, having them in pairs like this gives you the opportunity to have two strongly connected player characters, which can really create some interesting group dynamics in the game. In D&D, information about making Genasi characters is in the free Elemental Evil Players Companion. Our next set of four minis are centaurs, starting with two centaur bards. These minis have slightly unusual base sizes at 1.5 inches by 1 inch. Their playable D&D stats are in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica and in the Mythic Odysseys of Theros, where they're labeled as medium-sized creatures, so your bases will encroach on the neighboring squares by a quarter of an inch each, which shouldn't be too bad. In Pathfinder, centaurs are considered large creatures, though. To me, the bards look perfect for a campaign that maybe visits the Feywild. The centaur druids do as well, though you may also encounter them protecting, say, a sacred forest glade. The female centaur druid is cradling a little fawn, and both have a flower and leaf motif, so if you really want to make these extremely colorful and beautiful, you certainly can. Having a centaur member of the party could be really interesting for your game, but if there's a lot of rope climbing, you better hope that they've been working on their upper body strength. Next, we have our set of Elephas, described as gentle giants, starting here with our bard and cleric. Now, in 5th edition, elephant folk were introduced as Loxodons in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, where there was a whole paragraph about what you can do with your trunk alone, including grappling your foe. The detailing on these figures is really awesome. Look at the decoration on the bard's ears and tusk, and notice the cleric's trunk armor and elephant-themed shield. Just really cool. 
Next is the Elephas Druid and Ranger. The Druid may be one of my favorite minis in the set, and not just because I love owls and my buddy Michelle plays an owl named Horatio in my Humblewood game. This mini also has a small bird sitting on the staff and two on his tusks. I can just imagine how beautiful it would be nicely painted up. The Ranger mini could easily work as a rogue as well, I think. I love the elephant look with the hood pulled up over his head and the trunk plucking an arrow out of the quiver, something perfectly legal under Loxodon 5e rules, by the way. Next, we have the Volodik minis, who are bird folk who would work as Aarakocra in D&D and who are absolutely smurfing perfect for a Humblewood game. Here we have the Volodik rogue and knight. I hope Michelle is watching because she needs that owl knight mini. Each of these figures is based on a different type of bird, which is why Humblewood jumps out to me. The detailing on the feathers and the armor should also make these absolutely gorgeous when they're painted up. And next we have our Volodik Warrior and Warlock. I really want to see what a talented painter could do with that parrot warrior with that cool tribal sword and that feathered shield. It could really be an absolutely stunning mini. And the vulture looking warlock is generic enough to use as any caster class, I think, and actually looks like a great mini to use as a villain. I'm thinking of all the possibilities of a vulture necromancer right now. Let's take a quick look at the various sizes of these minis. While most of them fit in perfectly well with your typical D&D and Pathfinder minis, as I showed you earlier, be aware that the Elephas are a little bit taller, though still to the same scale, of course. I would expect an elephant person to be a little bit larger than an owl person. One of the cool things about these minis is that they do have that relative height difference, reflecting that all of these races or ancestries have different heights, quote, in real life. Now, those 20 minis are available from the start on their Kickstarter, but they do have more that hopefully will become available as stretch goals are met. First, we have a set of Minotaurs, another race detailed in 5e in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica and the Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Let's start with our two caster Minotaurs, one with a very cool pose with his disco ball staff and the other with flame shooting out of her spellbook. In my current Curse of Strahd campaign, my buddy Harry is playing a Minotaur after being reincarnated, so that staff-wielding caster is just too good to pass up for me. Here are the Minotaur Warriors. First, we have a pretty classic looking minotaur with a long sword and a flail, and his counterpart is a female minotaur with this amazing pose. I really appreciate how almost all of these minis are loaded to bear with weapons and potions and other little details that make them really look like adventurers. If you're playing in a Ravnica or Theros setting, your mini options are very limited, so these are certainly going to fill a void for you. Finally, we have two sets of goblins. At the time of this recording, we didn't have renders for all of them, but I can show you the rogues and the druids. Let's start with the rogues first. In classic goblin style, he's walking around with a lit stick of dynamite, along with his loot stash. The detailing in his little foot wrappings and his long goblin toes is pretty incredible. His partner in crime is this happy-go-lucky goblin queen, hiding two daggers behind her back, along with a bag full of coins. Okay, I take it back. This is my favorite mini in the set. She's even clutching a jewel with her foot. Oh my god. Let's wrap up with our goblin druids. First, we have this terrifying goblin shaman of some sort, clearly tapping into the dark tapestry or some other eldritch dimension. This is another mini that would make an amazing boss creature for an adventure, though I'm not completely sure that druid is the first word that comes to mind with him. The female druid here is putting on her one-woman show of Hamlet. I'm afraid to even ask too many questions about her. She has some sort of cute furry creature grasping onto her arm and another one on her shoulder, and I'm not even sure what that head is on her staff. Oh, stop the presses. They just gave us renders of two more goblins. We have a male and female goblin barbarian. I think the male goblin would work as any type of soldier class, really. He's got a satchel full of spears, and he appears very happy to throw one. The female barbarian looks like she's in the middle of going into a rage. I really dig her long, 
braided hair, which I don't recall seeing on any goblin before. And these goblins really do feel like a nice middle ground between the D&D and Pathfinder goblin designs. So I think you could really easily use them in either game without them standing out too much. And there will be at least two more goblin fighters released as stretch goals, assuming the Kickstarter takes off in the way it should. We just don't have renders for those just yet. As you can hopefully see, these minis are more detailed than a lot of the ones we review here at the Gallant Goblin. I'm sure that there are a lot of little details on these sculpts that I missed. So if you see something cool, call it out in the comments section below, along with a timestamp if you want so people can refer back. Man, I know Kraken Chips is sponsoring this video, so you have to take what I say with a grain of salt, but don't sleep on these minis. These sculpts are fantastic. The build quality is superb, and I love that they focus on those minor races that just don't get enough love. I'd love to see them do some tieflings, maybe some kobolds, maybe even like Lakatha fish folk, or maybe even like those sci-fi races for Starfinder. It's just awesome stuff. If you are interested, using the link in the doohickey below will let them know that you heard about them from us. So as far as cost goes, Kraken Ships is selling them in these sets that we talked about, sets of four. Generally, the more sets you pledge for, the deeper the discount. So you can pick up one set of minis for 17 bucks, and that's only $4.25 a mini. But as you go up to six or more sets, that price per mini drops to $3. Kickstarter now allows add-ons as well. Finally, so if you want to see some, if you do see something that you like from this collection or the previous Kickstarter, you can add that on as well. So you should be able to get exactly what you want. So thank you for Kraken Ships Fantasy Tabletops Miniatures to let us tell you about them today. Go check them out on Kickstarter. Get some awesome minis, and if you're feeling a little extra generous today, let them know that you heard about them from us. Thank you for sharing some time with me today. I hope you had as much fun learning about these as I did showing them to you. Until next time, be safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.